to this Times Techies webinar. I'm Shilpa Fadnis and I have with me my colleague Sujit John. The two of us will moderate today's discussion. Today we are discussing job guarantee programs that are gaining huge traction for tech firms. As the demand for digital skills is widening, tech firms are taking the lead in rolling out job guarantees for its learners in hot skills like machine learning, data analytics, data science, digital marketing, cybersecurity, and full stack developers. Driven by the pandemic, 2020 saw an immense growth in demand for digital roles globally. India, for instance, recorded a total of 380,000 job postings for cloud roles. A 40% increase over 2019 showed an ASCOM report. Said managed close to around 150,000 openings, leaving 265,000 job postings unfulfilled. This is a massive gap expected to widen to 7 lakh. 69,000 by 2025. And that is pushing NASCOM to put more emphasis on creating cloud talent. The Indian SaaS ecosystem is another driver of cloud demand. SaaS companies in India employ more than 40,000 professionals across domains, more than any other tech segment. To discuss this, we have three seasoned panelists. We have with us Krishna Kumar. Krishna is the founder and CEO of Simply Learn. He's a serial entrepreneur with over 19 years of experience in information technology. Before Simply Learn, he was the co-founder and CEO of Tech Unified, which was acquired in 2007. Krishna imagined the need for constant reskilling and lifelong learning way before the trend got established as the only way for professional advancement. Simply Learn began as a blog to one of the largest global players in professional certification training. Play one of the biggest players in online training and certification. Welcome, Krishna. Thank you, Shilpa. We have Shashank Murali. Shashank is the co founder and CEO of Re Relevel by Unacademy. A serial entrepreneur, Shashank founded Advice on an online tutoring platform with his batchmates while still pursuing his undergraduate studies at Bits Pilani. The company was then sold to US based HashLearn. Shashang then founded Tap Chief in 2016, an online future of work platform that allowed professionals to learn, network, and win short term projects without committing to full time jobs. In 2021, Tap Chief was acquired by the Unacademy Group to build Relevel, with Shashank at the helm as a CEO. His strategic direction to the company has helped Relevel achieve tremendous scale within a short period of time. Welcome, Shashank. Hey, thanks, Ujit. Thanks, Shilpa. And good evening, everyone. And we have Chandramauli G. Chandramauli is Senior VP of Sales at Upgrad Knowledge Hut. Uh, knowledge Hut, or oh, Knowledge Hub, sorry. Uh, it's Knowledge Hut. Knowledge Hut, Knowledge Hut. Sorry, Knowledge Hut helps companies and people around the world to transform with technology. Chandramauli plays a critical role in the leadership team of Knowledge Hut, which is expanding its course offerings and international markets. He has more than 13 years of experience handling sales processes in IT services. Before joining Knowledge Hut, he worked with various leading consulting companies, including Emphasis, ICMG, Kofianzis Consulting, and Resolve Business Services. Welcome, Chandra Mauli. Hey, thank you, Sujit. Thank you, Shilpa. Those who are viewing this can send in questions through the Facebook comment box. Shilpa and I'll put them to Krishna, Shashank, and Chandra Mauli. Krishna, let me start with you. Um, tell us with what confidence are you offering these job guarantees? Uh, are things so good today that you can now tell people that come for your courses that jobs are guaranteed? How does it work? So thanks, uh, Sujit. So I think, uh, first of all, let me tell you that this is not an easy promise. Right? It's a very big, bold promise. And in a way, by not delivering this promise, you are putting your entire company at risk. Because few learners not not going back dissatisfied can help can do a lot of damage to your brand, right? So we are very very. Uh, it's a, it was a very thoughtful uh, 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 approach that we took after doing a series of pilots. So we started offering this kind of programs two years back. We did uh, a lot of pilot. We saw what's working, what's not working. Who can we take as input to our programs? What kind of assessment allows us to filter candidate and to whom we can train and, and successfully place uh, at our customer's end. The, the good part at, for Simply Learn Business was that I have a very large enterprise business. You name a company in IT services world in, in, in the country today, all of us get their fresh hire onboarded through Simply Learn. All of them. Like The question is that some of them might be using more than Simply Learn as a vendor, but pretty much any large company that is hiring on tech side, 
once they hire simply learn is a part of their training program in ensuring that those new hires are are, are getting onboarded and then delivering to their, their various projects so we did a lot of analysis in terms of what kind of skill set they look for when they hire candidate what uh, what are they training on so can we do this independently to people who are not getting an opportunity to become part of those companies so we started small and then at some point of time we got a lot of confidence that to launch this program at a much larger scale and that's where now this is this is a very very scaled offering from simply learn side we are we get thousands of people who come and apply for these programs and they have to go through an independent assessment and we think that this assessment should be a, be from an independent party we as simply learn we don't want to assess we want a third party to assess and so that we can hold them accountable so in our case we have a tie up with hacker earth they do an assessment only when they when the people get a certain minimum marks that we have designed who designed the assessment program along with them they become part of our sales funnel and then there's a extensive program that we run it's a 6 to 9 months program 6 months if you have some kind of computer background so like you are you are a btech computer science bca mca then it's a 6 months program if you are an engineering graduate but you are not a computer science graduate then we do 3 months of prep once you clear the prep successfully where we teach basics of computer like data structures and and things which are like generally taught in a computer science course after you are done with that then you are put into a, a proper 6 months program and and once you complete the program there's a lot of career preparation and those kind of things that we do and then you are moved ahead um, in our job funnel on the job funnel also we get a lot of companies coming and contacting us to hire simply learn graduate huge like i think there is a there is a we have a page called hire from us pretty much get like anywhere from 10 to 30 inquiries every day or companies saying that i want to hire this kind of graduate so so it's a very good ecosystem we are getting good number of inquiries of people who come who want to be part of this program we have companies who want to hire from us there are like independent assessment so all the all, everything is working out pretty well for us and we want to scale this program at a much higher level the reason why we took this call of saying that okay we'll guarantee you a job because there are a lot of people who are at the fence they are not sure whether this is going to work this is not going to work so we took this bold promise saying that okay, don't worry if it doesn't work you get your money back so right now our success rate is 98% there are only 2% people which we are not able to place for various reason i think is we can maybe have do a lot of deep dive on why those 2% people are not getting it but obviously our aim is to that can we this 98 also become 99 or closer to 100% and that's what we are focusing on currently okay okay lot more to ask you there but before that uh, shashank and chandra mali shashank uh, how does your program work well um as the an academy group we've sort of always believed in building products building offerings which are positively addictive right uh, which we believe uh, creates great positive impact for our users uh, so as part of when we started relevel uh, i think what we wanted to do effectively was to translate what we had seen in our core test preparation business where we were able to democratize access to great teachers access to great education uh, from anywhere anytime and we wanted to do all of these characteristics into job opportunities and one of the things we realized is that so far you know your the college you went to or the degree you hold has been the predominant credential and we asked ourselves that hey can we create a new one which is purely and truly based on skills that companies are looking for today so we basically said you know what if we were to create a transparent path for someone to say that if i clear this exam or if i clear this test i will get a great job with some of india's best companies uh then they would naturally be eager to do so and it would and some of the things that we kept in mind was we said that this should apply irrespective of where they come from what college they went to what degree they hold right none of it should matter the only thing that should matter is the skills that the industry is looking for if an individual possesses that we should be able to deliver a job to them and that's how we launched these tests a series of three tests back in august uh in you know front end and back end development and business development today we have a series of 18 tests uh, across various categories like analytics marketing product uh, and now we're also entering some of the core engineering sectors like mechanical electrical engineering uh and it's as simple as that people come clear a test it happens every day uh it starts at 10 a.m ends by 6 p.m it's conducted over 6 hours it's a rigorous test 
across five rounds. In fact, we even have a live interview as part of uh, one of the rounds in the test in itself. So when folks, when you know, candidates go through this entire experience uh, and come out on top, companies are more than willing to hire them because they're already tested and they're tested at times more rigorously than some of the company's traditional recruitment processes, right? So that's that's what sort of what uh, Relevel is all about. Uh, we stand for that simplicity that come give the tests and get your dream job. Okay, so in this your case, you don't even have to go through a program to do it. You, if you just that's take right. this test, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So so what simply learn? I mean, you, Krishna, you do that hacker test kind of at the final stage, is it? Uh, so we do this uh, both uh, pre and post. So uh -huh. we just to take them as as part of our program. See, our so just our experience has been that good candidates who are already working, they don't want to take any test. Okay. They want to be pursued. It's like oh. a demand supply game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whereas people who want a job, they are ready to to do anything and everything to get that job. Incidentally, in Simply Learn program, we would have expected a lot of fresh graduates to come and and join this program and get their first job. What we are seeing is that a lot of people who are not who are already working are taking our program and there we figured it out that what's happening there so a lot of if you look at our where do our like we produce 10 lakh plus engineers every year not all of them are getting into tech so where are they going they are getting into inside sales job they are getting into bpo job they are getting into all kinds of this like what market representative and those kind of field jobs we see a large number of them are coming and applying for simply learn job guarantee program because what we are saying is that it will make you software developer or a data analyst. Now, while the entry uh, job promise that we are giving is less, but it's very, they, by their experience, they know that once you get into tech as an industry, then your growth is much faster than being in a BPO. So that's where our product sits. We are not telling you that we'll help you get a job in Amazon. No, that's not our, our simply learn promise. I'll get you a software developer job or a data science job in a tech company or why tech company when every company is hiring this, this kind of graduates right banks are hiring manufacturing is hiring government is hiring everybody is hiring this kind of graduates so that's what our promise is you if you are working in a bpo sales or any any non-tech job and you want to start with an entry-level job simply learn job guarantee programs are your like sure sort of uh, bet to get into okay we'll come back to more on that uh chandra Mali, tell us i mean how does knowledge hat work uh, so typically what we feel, right, a uh, software job is a kind of a dream for any engineer, right? So uh, currently, if I look at in the market, only 30% of them are getting placed. And 70% 70, 70 of them, rightly said by Krishna, right, are working in different streams like inside sales or marketing, or uh, maybe in a BPO jobs or backend jobs. So uh, that is where, you know, we thought, you know, uh, probably this kind of, you know, target market which we need to tap and fill their uh, individual dreams. So that is when we uh, inception this idea. And uh, we, we work with a lot of uh, enterprise customers and we exactly know what, it, what, what it, the kind of skill sets are the skills they are looking at when it comes to uh, in their job roles. So that is when we identified and we almost did uh, another three, three years research and uh, 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 created this program. And, and definitely, you know, uh, there is an entry uh, probably, you know, test uh, for, to get this qualified, so uh, we we uh, you know understand the kind of uh, you know analytical and the reasoning capabilities what they carry out because this is very very important for any software engineer to get placed in any company, and and in case if uh, they get, they don't get through we tell them how they can actually achieve uh, you know uh, to make themselves and getting their uh, dream fulfilled, and and our program is very you know I would say uh, uh, I would say uh hands-on ex you know, experience program so each and every day they day in day out they code and they build on the project and we give them a micro level projects where the industry kind of you know, probably we throw a problem statements to them to work on uh these problem statements are you know how if, if there is any if, you know, people stuck on any project what kind of uh, problems they encounter in an enterprise level, how they come you know, get through those kind of challenges. So these kind of things we teach them during our program. That's why we strongly say that, you know, there's a job guarantee program and, and uh, we'll make sure that whatever the skills required by an industry will get acquired uh, by them by the end of this program. 
how long is the program uh the program is uh, five months program yeah okay and then uh, do you also put them through a test or something like that how do how do you determine how good yeah. they are yes so after completion of the pro, uh, course they would be actually working on the capstone project which is an enterprise level project so uh, then there will be a uh, test after that so based on which we give them a score uh, how if, if there is any they, they lack in any skill we tell them uh, we teach them how they can accomplish those skills to uh, get through these job interviews okay shilpa shilpa you no volume is an issue no shilpa can't hear you hello ha ha okay yes sorry uh, yeah again some problem career trajectory right once they sign up for each of these programs so uh, from there on how do you think their career progresses do you think uh, you are in the process of formulating that as well in terms of career mapping from say for instance a full stack developer where will they land themselves in two or three years uh, so uh, krishna coming to you first and then uh, shashank and Maulik can chime in on this yeah so shilpa for software developers or full stack developers or even uh, people who are starting at a, at a entry level job in data is 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 a very well established career path like most companies already have a defined career path that you start as a developer then you become a senior developer then you become a tech lead or a team lead and after that it it starts getting into two directions that you can become more on the management side and become a, a build your career to become an engineering manager or engineering leader or head of engineering or you can build your career to become an architect and principal architect and so on so this this is very very established science i think the challenge that used to happen is that most companies used to go only to few select campuses to hire so people who are not uh, fortunate enough to get into those companies they had tough time getting into any company and most of them end up, end up uh, they used to end up doing non tech kind of job now that during this pandemic and in general the behavior has changed across all kinds of companies now companies are doing most of the hiring completely virtual completely remote and that's where all this opportunity has come up so so that was one factor that allowed us to get start offering this kind of service, this kind of product the second was this whole demand supply gap everybody wants like entry level talent or everybody wants tech talent because suddenly all kinds of companies want to become more and more digital and that suddenly created huge demand for technical talent because if you want to become digital you need to build a system and that requires people so huge demand gap, supply gap that got created because of the whole world we got digitally transformed in the last 2 3 years that's one and second the hiring became all virtual so that also helped a lot in fact now I, we also see a very very uh, popular trend uh, on, in the entry level hiring that some of these large uh, companies what they are doing they are hiring entry level talent at a differential salary like for example one one project that we are part of is a very very interesting project i i can't name the company but what they are doing is that they have gone and hired thousands of people in campuses and we are onboarding them as part of we are pre onboarding them what is pre onboarding is that we are training those graduates while they are still in their eighth semester of college now by the time they complete their train uh, like this training gets over and their semester also gets over eighth semester they will join that company in july now what the company has given them a promise that if you complete this simply learn program successfully we will reassess you at the time of joining and right now the offered salary is 3 and 1/2 lakhs if you clear their reassessment at the time of joining your salary can go to 7 lakhs and the projects that you do as part of the training can also get counted as your final semester engineering project so they have work with the universities where the students are still studying to so it's a win win for both you learn a new skill you also get your pro, real project done as part of your learning and that satisfies your university criteria and you also have potential to double your salary even before joining so those kind of things are also happening because of this demand supply shortage that we see in the market similarly on data side also is a very very established model of career growth the challenge was just getting into okay shashank uh, chandramali you want to add anything no i think uh, uh, krishna covered pretty well right uh, the demand uh, was a supply is something is a challenge in the industry right so that that is something which uh, we actually try to fill okay okay shashank let me ask you i mean uh, which courses are are you offering these job guarantees uh, these guarantees in uh, where, where do you have the conf most confidence well i think uh, we are a platform so we take a, a holistic approach in that sense uh, which is essentially 
what we have done is that anybody who clears any of our tests, we make sure that they get a job in that respective category. Uh, with respect to courses, uh, we have about 10 courses running at this stage and we continue to add more. Uh, the courses are designed to help you learn each and every piece or each and every skill that's essential for you to A, crack the test, which will eventually get the job. And even if you decide that, you know what, I don't need to get a job through the test, I'll do that independently, even then so. Uh, so all of our courses are designed in that fashion. They're designed to be practical. They're designed to be uh, learned by doing. Uh, with you know some of the similar components like micro learning, micro projects, access to industry experts, mentoring, and so on and so forth. Right. So uh, we don't particularly call out one or two categories where we say we will guarantee you a job. Our approach has been that uh, for a learner who is consistent and disciplined in attending all classes, uh, completing all assignments, doing all that's necessary and asked of as part of the pedagogy of the program, uh, will be able to clear our tests and thereby will be able to get a job. That's been our approach. Okay. Chandramali, how is it for you? Uh, so typically, uh, the stacks, uh, right, JavaScript and Java stack, when it comes to full stack, is in demand. And uh, that, that is where uh, industry is facing a challenge in uh, getting the right skilled people. Right. So uh, our, our program typically uh, helps them to get through those interviews and uh, the uh, again, as mentioned by Krishna also, right? So the packages in the same project, it varies from, from uh, maybe, maybe I would say, uh, range from 3 lakhs to 20 lakhs. So we have seen that uh, changes, right? Even though if somebody has a fresher, they, they, don't, they don't even know the kind of skill set what they carry out. And the, they, they think that, you know, this is based off their knowledge and uh, these are the companies are this what the companies would ask. So we, we tell them uh, how the companies actually evaluate and the kind of skill set what they expect from each and every individual, which is required for their projects, especially when it comes to a full stack. And this is what uh, call it as you know intermediate or advanced level, which you need to get acquired to work on certain projects. So this helped them to uh, get through uh, you know higher uh, packages, I would say. So especially uh, the people who look for a job change or maybe a career change who's working in a different stream would actually opt for uh, this kind of programs and get through an app higher packages like, you know, we have seen the people are getting the 20, 25, uh, even though they're, they're joining as a fresher in that particular industry. 20, 25 lakh? Yes. Packages, is it? Yes. yes. Wow. Okay. Krishna, uh, where, which other courses where you offer this? So, Sujit, we are right now of, uh, offering two programs. One is full stack and that has two variant. Uh, one with computer science background, one without computer science background. So, so essentially, those are, those are two programs. And third program that we have is data science. Anybody wants to get it, get as de, in data as an industry, we are launching one more program in digital marketing this month. I think any, the program might get launched this, this week or the next week. The next program that we launch that we are launching is is in automation testing. It is a very popular world that uh, popular popular word that software industry uses for this testing professional is called SDET, software development test engineer. So. The word used for in, for people who are on the development side is SDE, software development engineer, and for the testing it is SDET, software development testing engineer, right? So, so this is a program that we are launching. So testing has also moved; it's no longer so. So twenty years back, when I started my career as a software developer, people used to like literally go click click and look at everything. So that that has completely gone. So what now? There are a lot of tools that have come up. Like this, there's a framework called Selenium. So using that, you can automate a lot of things. So now this testing guys are also actually developers. It's just that they have to look at the code from a different perspective. So, so that's the program that we are we are launching. I think first week of July. So these are the four program. But the idea is that uh, the, the the traction in these programs are so high that I think we'll continue to launch. In our case, uh, since we have this whole 360 degree approach, that now not only I want to launch this program, I have to ensure that every guy I'm able to place them also. So we are parallelly talk, talking to our, our our employer partners and trying to create enough job so that uh, so both are happening in parallel. I don't want to launch and then not be in a position to, to give them enough opportunity to get interviewed and get jobs. So, so, so that's why we're launching it one by one. And, but what we also want, uh, Sujit, our approach has been, has been that not only in this job guarantee business, but every business that any category that we are playing, we should be the largest player in that particular category. Like job guarantee also, we started two years back. So already our scale is pretty high, but we want to like get to a certain scale before we launch more programs. You don't want to like have 10, 15 people in 
placing every month. At least we want few hundred people to be placed every month. So that's the skill that we're looking at it. And I'll agree to what Chandan always said, the offers are very high. Like the last highest offer that we have seen is 35 lakhs. But the guy was not a fresher, by the way. This was his first job he got as a developer. He had some work experience, but then he also learned programming and he got a 35 lakhs job. How old was he? I think he was, he had about six years of experience prior to becoming, taking this full stack program. And he was, a, he was a kind of business analyst kind of person. And then he did, did this entire full stack programming and he got a direct, the company hired him directly as a kind of a lead that though your programming side, you are new, but at least you have the other business understanding and so on. So still in his twenties. Yeah, it's still in 20s, yes. Okay. So, but you said, um, what age group of people are coming to you? Um, Mostly, uh, so we have two audience. I think, uh, prime. so I'll say 60% of the, my audience are people who already have, let's say, six to two year of work experience, either in a BPO or in some kind of non-tech job. So they are the ones who want to switch because they have seen in their own companies. Okay. Like, for example, I, the recent, you see some of these layoffs happening in the industry, right? Is anyone doing anything with the tech team? No. They are still hiding net new hires in the tech team and data team, right? Most of these are non-tech kind of jobs. So the people who are part of those jobs, they can see this happening. The tech, even in bad times also, tech future is very, very bright, right? Your growth also is very good. A lot of opportunities, demand supply gap and so on. But non-tech area, you have to constantly prove yourself. So, uh, so that's a big chunk. I think 60, 65% of my audience is that category. Fresh graduate is also a category that have started growing, but there we see one challenge. The challenge is that, see these guys who have, who have some kind of work experience, they can pay for the fee on their own. Of course, we have all kinds of financing options that you can pay over two years and whatnot, but they have, they are earning something. So they can pay part of their fee and they don't have to go and ask their parents. This fresh graduates, they have to go and ask money from their parent. And that's where the problem, the problem is that if they go to the parent, the parent saying, you, you, you spent four years, <laughs> and so much of money doing engineering. Now we want to again spend to do another thing, right? So, so that where they, they, they find a challenge. But the reality is that that's the reality, right? So that's where we see them like have struggling. How much is your course? Uh, our, I think our, our, this full stack course is at a lower price. I think it's about 1.25, la 2 lakhs. And I think the, the data one is at a higher price. That is at 1.7 lakhs. Okay. Okay. So uh, the job in data is actually higher than the average job in full stack. Okay. Average, okay. 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 Shashank, the same question, re-level, uh, re what, what age group of people are taking your tests? Oh, uh, well, we, we, the majority are in the age groups of 20 to 30, uh, more specifically 20 to 25 is higher in that bracket as well. Uh, and incidentally for us, the highest job that we have seen is a 20 year old getting a job at credit at 40 lakhs. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I think for us, what we have continued. Because in cred, you said, is it? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. He, he was basically just getting done with his college based out of Kanpur, uh, sort of a uh, person who kept coding throughout, uh, then took our test. He would have otherwise probably never heard back from cred because, you know, it was not a very well-known college. Uh, uh, and, and a lot of times, you know, some of the folks who are absolutely really great at engineering data, and some of analytics, et cetera, are not always possess the other skill of hustling and getting that cold email done, et cetera. So we give a great platform in that sense where they don't need to do all of that hustling and, you know, maybe create a web page for themselves or write Twitter threads or something, right? Uh, they give the test and they get recognized by these companies and get uh, picked up uh, as and been given great offers. So yeah, long story short, you know, we, we have a lot of folks, a majority of our age groups are in the 20 to 80, uh, 20 to 30 uh, age group. However, we always do see, uh, you know, some, uh, you know, uh, deviations as well. Like for instance, uh, in our, we also run a sales program, which is just for three months, right? Uh, while obviously tech has a lot of, uh, you know, a bright future, a lot of growth. And we see a lot of our learners there. Uh, there are some learners who fundamentally need some decent job and some stability. And they know for a fact that they probably will not enjoy learning some of these tech concepts, right? So they uh, naturally go into some of these non-tech jobs. So we run a uh, three-month sales uh, course. We run a three-month HR and TA course, et cetera. And one of these cases, again, we had a 35-year-old uh, homemaker 
who had two kids who had a age gap of uh, sorry a uh, work gap of about 7 8 years who took our co- uh, test took our course uh, because she couldn't clear the test in the first go after our course went through that process and ultimately got a great job right so i think these are the, what this is what we are seeing we are seeing about a good 70 80% of our learners as well from non metro cities uh, probably again because you know uh, folks who went to probably very well known colleges have you know, opportunities or pathways created for them already either through the college placement process or they have a strong alumni network and so on right uh, or their resumes are picked up by uh, you know ats's across companies with those keywords because the co- college name exists uh, whereas for a lot of our audience some of these tend to fail and that's where uh, the fact that they have proven themselves with a rigorous test etc adds to their credential and the, their real level profile access that credential uh, that they didn't have so you pay to p- take the test is it uh, shashank no no all of our tests are completely free and free yes so where do you make your money from of uh, currently we monetize with uh, you know when learners purchase our courses uh, but at the same time we are running some experiments on the company side as well uh, but yeah we will uh, be able to share publicly more in the future okay okay chatamali you want to add to that on uh, age group and all that yeah typically uh, uh, the students like probably the audience who take these programs in between uh, 22 that that's what we have seen and, and especially uh, we believe in you know there are a lot of uh, folks who do not have affordability to take these programs that's why we have created a model called uh, income sharing model so you don't pay us until you get a job so that's a kind of a model which we are currently running and we have run a lot of you know probably currently we have a couple of cohorts which going on that model so uh, we give them probably we ask students to take the program and uh, once they get placed that is when they start paying us from their salary once they get a salary that's how the model and and recently we have seen a success rate that you know one but there is a person who was in a texting domain wanted to change into full stack uh, who joined our program and uh, he got placed in boston consulting with a package of uh, 38 lakhs that is what the great success which we have seen okay okay a lot of questions coming in uh, shilpa i think uh, shilpa are you there yeah Should there are a lot of questions coming in this yeah. one is from heman dhavnani i am a banking profession sales professional with 10 years of banking sales experience i am a commerce graduate i wish to pivot my career what are some of the options that i have <laughs> who wants to take that yeah i can i can take it out so i think he has a lot of options maybe becoming an entry level developer with our job guarantee co- kind of program is not a option for him because he already has 10 years of experience but i think he can get into many other areas right like for example a lot of companies hire people who have that kind of domain experience in in in, in areas like project management or business analytics uh, uh, analytics even data is one area that he can look at doing a course if, if he does, does any of the data science or ai ml course i think there also he has a future to be made because that that tenure of banking experience has has, has value and with all these big companies like jp morgan goldman sachs everybody setting up these big centers here engineering centers i guess there, there will be a lot of opportunities for these guys no a lot of opportunity i think he should, he, what he used to pick up is data related skills take any data related program and if he has some kind of background i'm sure if if he has worked 10 years in banking he's good with numbers right so mm. there, are, there are a lot of tools that he can learn there are tools like r tableau which are way too much in demand okay okay shilpa shilpa you know volume is an issue why does it keep happening to your system uh Uh, Shilpa, no, we still can't hear you. Oops. No, no, Shilpa, we can't hear you. Let me. Uh, okay, I have this question here from Somi Shagarwal. Um, is okay. He's asking. Uh, can you forecast talent pool requirements based on skills required in advanced technologies like metaverse, cybersecurity, uh, OT, and cloud? 
Okay. <laughs> Metaverse, cybersecurity, OT, and cloud. Uh, talent pool requirements, future predictions. Uh, or who wants to go? Take, okay, Shashank, want to take a first go at that? Sure. Um, well, see, I think uh, any of the emerging technologies uh, will naturally be in demand because they start off as niche, right? Uh, five years back, I'm sure data science uh, was niche. Uh, so long story short, with respect to any emerging technology, if one is thinking that they need to, they, uh, they are thinking of picking it up or building their skills, I would urge to build it out of interest more than uh, talent pool predictions, right? Because by virtue of the fact that it's an emerging technology and uh, that it will aid industry and businesses in multiple forms, they will gain prominence. They will gain. Uh, there will be more uh, jobs commonly available and people aspiring for it. So one can look at it some of at, at some of the ones mentioned, like let's say metaverse or blockchain or any of these, as as getting a head start in the industry by being one of the first. Uh, like very small personal anecdote that I would like to share. Like back when I was in college in 2012, 2013. Uh, nobody was doing Android development because, you know, it was not the most common thing. Everybody was doing computer programming uh, and trying to, you know, make sure that they learn those little pieces that's, that are necessary to crack interviews. Uh, I started doing Android development just because I wanted to build my own apps. Now, that would have 100% gotten me a job because I would have definitely be, by the time I graduated, one of the few, but it, life took me on a different path. It became entrepreneurship, startups, et cetera. So with respect to anything which is emerging, if it is of keen interest and if you feel that you're going to be passionate about it, once you've given some shot at it, please go at it uh, with all guns blazing because you will definitely be one of those few people who will be good at it when it actually gains prominence. Because by the time it actually becomes vogue, where every industry reports and it's on multiple newspapers that there are thousands and lakhs of jobs in this domain, uh, you are one of one in a lakh. Uh, but you, you, if you pick it up today, you have a shot to be one in hundred. So that that would be my take. Okay. I know Chandra very probably a very different perspective from what was asked, but yeah. Chandra Mauli, Krishna, you want to. Especially uh, cybersecurity and cloud, uh, what I have recently read uh, through Forbes, right? Uh, that in next uh, four years, there will be an, you know, the increase in 500% uh, increase in demand, especially in cloud and uh, cybersecurity. cybersecurity. Yeah, I think uh, this is the right uh, time anybody can actually pursue uh, to get their, uh, you know, unleash their opportunities, especially in the market, in the international markets too. Yeah, you know, even in these webinars, uh, many companies who do it with us as part, uh, a lot of the conversations that are around cloud and uh, cybersecurity, of course. Yeah. Right. Krishna, you want to add to that? Yeah, so Sujit, uh, I think one, the, so this is a typical product management job. So what do product managers do? They look at patterns and then they, they predict patterns on what can happen in future. So let's say you talk about metaverse, right? There are, so it's a very hot new technology being talked about. And there are other technologies just similar to where metaverse is maybe five years down the line, five years earlier, right? So looking at how the growth pattern of those technologies has been, and there are various ways to look at it, right? One, you can look at Google trend, like search for those keywords and see how Google search trended for that particular technology in the last five years. So you can, and if the, let's say, if the first six months of that, let's take data science, like data science also was very, very new thing five years back, right? People used to talk about a lot. And of course it has become a big concept today. So if you look at the search pattern of data science for the first six months and look at the metaverse, and if they are like looking at a similar kind of pattern, so that's one similarity. Other thing that what we do is that look at the, the jobs being posted on metaverse or any such new technology. And you can also extrapolate that, that if it is, if it is growing at a certain rate, what will be the growth in the next um, five years, right? So, so, so I think the product managers are, are are doing this day in day out, right? They are looking at what can be what can become the next big deal, right? What 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 are the areas where we should focus our uh, energies on building new programs where the demand supply gap is only going to increase because eventually people take courses where there's a demand supply gap. Like for example, so eight nine years back, big data used to be a big word, right? Now there's hardly any takers for big data course. Oh really? 
that has that world has moved to a totally different uh, dif different kind of technologies right so of course the same much advanced technologies have come in so people have started taking those kind of programs okay metaverse is not one technology right uh, you, do you have can you have a course in metaverse uh, how does that work see uh, in in any any big technology area not everybody needs to be a deep expert in that particular area there are people who have also, also have, have have to just understand what the technology can do like for example we have this course with uh, water ai for business now it's meant for people who are going to understand how ai can be helpful in them running their business well or or identifying opportunity so they are not going to do ai programming they just need to understand ai is a concept to be applied in business so same thing is for metaverse also some people need to understand metaverse as a concept and so on and some people who are like developers and all they need to understand they need to pick up some specific technologies some of those specific technologies that go into yeah. developing the metaverse yeah is it like an ar vr or a whatever yeah okay okay shilpa is your audio now hello can you hear me yeah 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 okay okay all right this one is uh, from uh, amit sohan is there any program which is tied up with it giants like microsoft oracle and ibm on successful completion uh, are there opportunities uh, of getting job op offers from them partnerships with uh, companies so, yeah, simplyn has a lot of programs with microsoft ibm and all but i don't think those companies give you a promise that if you complete this program you will 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 only will hire there are a lot of companies who hire who use ibm technology so you can do this program and some other company might hire but most of these partnerships are more on i'll say content partnership then microsoft or ibm they give some part of the content that they have built to be included in our offering that we can take it to the market so all of you have partnerships with uh, these uh, big company i mean technology companies generally is it right yeah we do so yeah uh, uh huh pre level also yeah i mean companies choose to start hiring uh, candidates who clear our test so uh -huh. yeah, uh so they sign up they say this, this, these are the positions we are currently hiring for uh and usually like you know as soon as a candidate clears a test in under 10 days in most categories they get placed and especially in tech uh by virtue of the supply demand we already discussed right so in in i mean they clear the test in like 2 3 days they have five interviews set up inevitably one or two companies give them an offer and they're gone so uh, yeah so companies do sign up as per their requirements some of them are a lot more consistent some of them come based on their existing uh, hiring needs shilpa yeah this one is from uh, karthik dhara while you have a preliminary screen screening for admitting candidates into your job guarantee programs what are your expectations in terms of time and effort commitment from the student Shilpa, I think the, all the specific details uh, the person can call our team and and get to understand. The reason for pre-assessment is that see we have we have a certain construct. We think that if you come if you if you have this kind of basic uh, aptitude, we can train you to become a developer or become a, a data scientist, right? I don't think you can make it anyone and everyone. Maybe somebody else can attempt to do so, but at least at our end we have we have taken our uh, our like. Um, analysis shows that if you have basic like say math science aptitude we can train you on other aspect and, and help you get a job but doesn't mean that okay you can't do other job of course there are so many different jobs and so many different areas that you can apply and get into so if somebody has a full time job and that it's a hectic job and all that uh, how difficult is that for that person to do these courses is definitely possible i think uh, the overall time commitment required for this uh, job guarantee programs at our end is roughly about 120 to 150 hours in a period of 6 to 9 months okay okay my power here has gone off uh, chandramouli how is it for you so uh, the commitment what we asked from our participants uh, it's it's uh, similar like what krishna mentioned it's 140 hours but we asked them to spend at least 2 uh, to 3 hours of time in a day so every day they have to spend 2 to 3 hours uh then they can definitely get into uh, uh the software roles are, are they able to do that the people who are uh, full time working and all that are they able to do those 2 3 hours every day yes so we designed this program in, in such a way that you know they can uh, join this program after their job hours so we have flexible in it we have flexible hours uh, which was given to the participant 
Okay. Oh, my power is a problem. Shilpa? Yeah. Uh, to the panelists, I just wanted to ask you, um, especially Krishna, you started this, how some of the technologists want to be pursued also. So especially during the pandemic, right, we saw how remote work took off and several of them were jumping jobs or were sitting on five to six offers. Um, and remote, cha remote work completely changed how they would approach their career roles and things like that. So I just wanted to ask you, um, for a cloud architect, um, how long do you think they're all staying in their uh, jobs? Is the uh, job change cycle, you know, collapse significantly in terms of cycle times? So Silva, definitely in the last two years, so tech uh, professionals were way too much in demand. I think the average tenure had come down as, as little as one year. But now that we see some kind of tightening happening in the market, so hopefully things should improve. But yes, there's a reality that for tech people having four or five offers was very common till recently, I'm sure things will become become better now it's like a little bit of funding tightening but but i think that will still tech, tech talent is still going to be in demand in spite of all kinds of tightening that happens in the funding environment because the core need for technology professionals the core need for businesses to transform themselves digitally is not going to go away anytime soon how do you ask each one of you uh, where is the biggest demand coming from uh, uh, I, there's IT services, there is the GICs and the MNC tech guys, startups. <clears throat> Where is the biggest demand coming from? And are there differences in the kind of talent that they hire? So, so the, the, of course, IT services are the biggest employer. So all numbers will like shift, tilted towards there because the numbers are <laughs> huge, right? But having said that, the startups we never used to hire fresh graduates. That concept itself was non-existent because most startups think that they're very smart people and they can they don't want to waste time in training they want ready-made talent who can come tomorrow who can come today and start delivering from tomorrow but because of this funding this tightening of not so easy to get talent i think startups of all sizes right from as small as 50 people to start up to as large as maybe 2000 people to start up all have started hiring fresh graduates so that's a change that has happened i think the last two years i don't think people used to hire fresh fresh graduates Okay, Shashank, you want to add to that? Uh, how's it for you? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, agreed agreed on many counts uh, with Krishna there. Uh, see the volumes, just by virtue of the size of the industry, the IT services will always have higher volumes. But, uh, uh, you know, one, once one starts looking at quality, in, and by quality, I basically mean, uh, what is the pay package, what kind of technology stacks are they working on etc uh there at least in technology roles obviously product companies tend to have a slightly higher uh package uh at times even even at even at entry levels as high as 2x two and a half x more than the standard entry level uh, it services job but at the same time uh you know across other other key um, non-tech roles, say sales, marketing, operations, etc. That's quite widespread, right? That that's across the board. Uh, but from a quality tech jobs, uh, you will see a lot more product companies offering higher salaries, and by virtue of which also they make their entry barrier uh, that much harder as well to compensate for both. So so that's that's sort of what we have traditionally seen. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, in terms of candidate preference, uh, okay, let me ask Chandra Mori. I mean, uh, do you see any uh, preferences? Who, where do they want to go uh, uh, between IT services, start startups, uh, GICs, MNC tech guys? So typically what I've seen, right, especially uh, when it comes to startups, see hiring and experienced folks is a uh, challenge. Right, they they have the funding issues or an affordability hiring and uh, maybe you know experienced folks would actually ask maybe in the range of uh, maybe uh, forty to sixty. So it will become a tough for them. But uh, what we have seen as a trend change, right? Even uh, the fresh graduates are maybe uh, I would say maybe zero to two years experienced folks. Uh, if they have the required skill required, you know, which is required uh, by their startups or their SMBs, they are actually started hiring those folks that is what we have seen as a trend change uh, definitely uh, there are you know tech is in high demand and people are having uh, definitely you know four to five offers in their hand and they're jumping off and the cycle is become you know one year uh, for the people who are actually shifting the jobs that's what we have seen 
Okay. Uh, but in, in, in terms of their preference, do they prefer a startup today versus a, a MNC tech company or an IT services company, anything like that? See, there, there are a couple of things which I can mention here, right? So people uh, you know, probably are in non-engineering background, right? Who want to become a software developer. We have trained a couple of them, uh, them as well uh, in our full stack programs. So those kind of folks are getting placed in startups. Okay. And, and there are a couple of passionate folks who actually wanted to work with startup because uh, working with startup, you know, they, they learn a lot of things. So they can explore multiple uh, uh, departments and then opportunities and a lot of learnings for them. They don't get in, uh, and it, uh, maybe I would say, uh, fang a man, maybe it takes some time for them to uh, get into that process to learn uh, all this, right? What they learn in startups and SMEs. Krishna, what do you see your preferences in your candidates? Where do they want to work? I think uh, the so I don't have very clear cut preference. Obviously, people, uh, young guys, they get attracted to bigger brands, and most of the large companies are bigger brand. Though, if people have to follow my advice, I'll tell them to join a startup because obviously you have huge learning opportunities there. Okay, okay. Shilpa, Shilpa, again your audio. Yeah. You have to set that right, Shilpa. Hello, can you hear me? We have yeah, this yeah, question yeah. from Yogesh Navalkar. I wanted to join Google. Uh, again, Shilpa, we can't hear you. Shilpa, we can't hear you. Shilpa, no, your audio, audio, audio is a problem. Oh, sorry. Sujit, can you ask the question then? Yeah. Okay, now we can hear you. Okay. Uh, I wanted, this question is from Yogesh Nevalkar. I wanted to join Google, but missed the opportunity. I'm a BSc and MCA graduate with five years of experience. Is this possible? Well, I think everything is possible in this world. Yeah. Right? <laughs> in fact, there are companies who are running um, uh, this interview preparation course for people to get into companies like Google. So there are companies who are offering those kind of, pro I don't know if Google, Google has some educational qualification cutoff or not. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. In in terms of the kind of skills and IT services guys want versus the MNC tech centers, engineering centers, and start are, are there distinct differences there? See, I have done a lot of experiments in that, and frankly, I think that um, there is some difference, but the difference can be bridged with training very easily. Is my my personal opinion. Mm, mm. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. The, the gap is larger. Uh, maybe you know. I would say that you know uh, the lack of uh, knowledge, right? So typically, what happened? They may not aware uh, that this is how uh, they can get placed in uh, this this kind of you know probably roles and this kind of MNCs, right? So that that's a knowledge if you can provide them with our uh, programs, then they can place anywhere. What I feel. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Krishna, you're saying the, uh, of course, uh, you mentioned the startup funding getting a little tighter now, and therefore they are becoming a little more cautious. Generally, world economy, generally, I mean, there's a Fed rate increases happening, uh, the Ukraine war, all of that seems to have at some level impacted global sentiments. Are you beginning to see any of that impact on the job scene in India? Not yet. No, and I don't see that tech tech side. There will be impact. Is my personal view because still, this is essential work. It's not that it's not a expense that many companies can avoid pushing it later. Everybody wants to become more digital, so tech talent is, will continue to have a lot of demand. Is my view. Yeah, yeah. Shashank, you want to? What is your view? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, a it's too early to call if there is any substantial impact uh, from the public markets, uh, what's been happening in the public markets and the federal rates uh, in India. Uh, and like Krishna said, I think uh, most companies who are hiring anybody in tech from us continue to hire. In fact, probably want more uh, because they also view it as a great opportunity that it's a great time to uh, hire talent, which they were previously competing a lot more for. Uh, so. I I think it's too early to call and agree with Krishna that it 
I don't, I would be very surprised to see uh, an adverse impact, at least in any technology roles. Uh, there would and could be some impact in uh, non-technical roles, uh, especially with companies with probably high burn rates, etc. Uh, but I mean, again, even there, it would be uh, whatever the company defines as non-performers uh, at best. Uh, but even there, you know, companies, while they were maybe letting go of a few people uh, publicly, etc., we are also seeing they also continuing to hire. So they are probably trying to identify talent which is working for them and which they define as good performance so that that cyclical piece will still continue in my opinion okay so future looks good even now shilpa any questions um... yeah yeah we have this question from amit jain i'm a commerce graduate and are there opportunities where uh, i profile from non technical to a technical role commerce graduate, commerce graduate. So I think uh, this is same applicable to the the person that we suggested on the banking side. That commerce yeah. happens to be good at maths, right? So you can look at a lot of opportunity across data. So data offers a lot of opportunity. Data science, data analyst, a lot of opportunity. Business analysts, all that are open for anybody who has a good maths background. Do they have to learn programming, uh, Krishna? So, so just anybody can learn programming, frankly. <laughs> But the okay. question is that you want to be a deep programmer or you want to use programming to solve a lot of automation, right? So the programming also has changed, right? There is a deep, very, very deep programming. And then there are programming that, that automates a lot of things, right? We, we call it scripting. And so like Tableau also, you can program to do a lot of things, right? That's not very difficult to understand. Anybody with a basic aptitude can also understand. And if you're a graduate, you have a, you have a basic aptitude, right? So definitely possible. So this commerce graduate you're saying can even pick up those skills. Um... You can use Tableau and our kind of skills because um, if you're a commerce graduate, you must have understand, uh, taken courses on a statistics. Mm -hmm. A lot of data related uh, analysis requires the knowledge of a statistics and maths. Definitely. Okay. Okay. And in our case, because you know, in all of our tests, we don't really have an entry barrier. You can be anybody having held any degree and you can come and give the test if you think you have the skills. And we often encounter uh, a lot of folks from commerce, arts, and other backgrounds, but they were keen on programming, they were keen on technology, and they were, you know, doing small projects or learning something off YouTube or any other resources that they may have found over their college years, etc. And we consistently see them, you know, being able to showcase their skills and companies very willingly uh, hiring them at times at much higher packages than even, you know, computer science graduates who probably don't possess the same level of skills. Right. So, uh, you know, I think at some point earlier, we said nothing is impossible. That's very, very true in this context, right? As long as you have the skills and the industry is increasingly moving towards that direction, because all companies would like today is if the hundred percent of the people they're hiring can hit the ground running on day one, that's paradise for most companies. And as a candidate, what one can do with that towards that is to simply try and A, learn what are the skills that are necessary and B, get proficient with, at them even before you can sort of get in. So a lot of self-learning is happening is what you're saying, Shashank? Absolutely. I mean, see, it's always happened. Like if you're passionate about something, you will always learn and you will always try to get better. Uh, I think the opportunity of that proving out pretty well in your favor, whether in the form of a great job, great salary, etc., is much higher than ever today. Great. Shilpa? Yeah, so if we have this uh, one question, I think we'll take this as the last question. We're almost coming to the close of the panel. Uh, this is specifically to Krishna Kumar. I see adverts from Simply Learn during IPL matches. Size massive scale. What's the kind of overall batch size you envision for your job guarantee programs? So I think, uh, Shilpa. Ajesh Gowda we are not going to like put everybody in the same batch frankly so we have a certain cohort size right the moment the cohort size goes beyond a certain uh, number we have to like go and start multiple batches so frankly see one is a direct job guarantee program that we are running and we are as i told you that most large companies the onboarding program is done by simply and most of them like you said just a question about what a scale so as we speak as as we speak today Simply Learn has at least has 100 parallel batches running for full stack. Not all of them are like, like uh, direct or B2C. A lot of them we are doing it for, like one of the customers, we are currently doing 25 batches in parallel. 
because we have uh, we have an order to train 7000 of their employees which they have offered on our campuses so in full stack we already have that kind of scale to run hundreds of batches in parallel so those who are looking at joining they think that suddenly because of this ad a lot of people will come and they will not get attention be rest assured i am more concerned than you because i have to place you also <laughs> <laughs> okay i think it's seven o'clock a great discussion this is exactly the kind of subject that our uh, readers and viewers uh, love to read and hear a uh, lot of interest of course in jobs uh, and good to hear that uh, there are a lot of jobs even now available and all of you who are in, in many cases are guaranteeing jobs for those who take some of these courses and some of your tests um, so thanks a lot, Krishna, Shashank, uh, Chandramauli. Really nice having you on our platform. Uh, hope to have you again. Thanks from Shilpa and me. Thank you. Thank you, Shilpa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.